A birdhouse is a fine addition to any backyard for some bird watching. And it's great for the spring and summer months. But for the other seasons, I think a bird feeder is a good complement to it. So that's the project that I'm going to get started here. And like any type of construction, the important stuff is hidden on the inside. So let's start and work our way from the bottom up. I've glued up a cedar blank for the base. And to give it a little style, over at the table saw, I cut a bevel on all four of the edges. Then in the middle, over at the drill press, made a centered hole. And that's going to accommodate a galvanized pipe that we're going to use to mount the bird feeder to. Now forming kind of a strong back for the whole bird feeder is this frame assembly. It's just four pieces of wood that are glued and nailed together. The top and bottom pieces have holes also to match up with that hole in the base. To provide rigidity, I have some half inch pieces of plywood that are going to go on either side, kind of like house sheathing, that will get glued in place. One thing to note about these is that again at the table saw, I tilted the saw blade 45 degrees and beveled those edges. And that's going to allow the seed to just slide right down into the bins. So I'm going to glue these pieces together and attach them to our base. From there, we'll work on the decorative ends, and for that I'll be at the bandsaw. The two end panels of the bird feeder really are what give it its style. And you can see that I've laid out that profile on one of the two pieces. It gives it a double gable look here. And what's really more important is that the two pieces are consistent with each other. So what I've done is, after laying it out on just one of them, I'm going to attach it to its twin with some double-sided tape. And since it's just two pieces of half-inch material, this bandsaw is plenty able to do it. Now with a nice wide blade attached to the saw, I can make the cut and track straight lines really easily. That means when I'm done, both of these pieces are going to be as identical as possible. And all I really need to do is use a file and a sanding block to just clean up some of the edges. And then from there, we'll head back over to the bench and start tackling the siding. Once the end pieces are cut to size and sanded smooth, head over to the table saw and you're going to cut a groove on the inside faces. And that's going to hold a plexiglass panel that creates the outside face of the birdseed hopper. Then you can attach these to this middle strong back section that I created a little earlier. Now it's time to add some decoration and go from plain plywood to something that has a little bit more of a cottage feel to it. And for that, we're going to use a couple of sizes and types of dollhouse shingles. Now these are very tiny cedar shingles. And for this lower section, we're going to use just the regular square cut ones. On the upper gable section, I have a bag of the rounded end fish scale shingles. So putting these on with the original plans, talked about brushing them with a little bit of epoxy and setting them in place. Ain't nobody got time for that considering how many shingles need to go on. So what I am going to do is just dip the top edge in some waterproof glue and I'm going to set it in place on the bottom and then on one side of a center line. You can see here a row of other layout lines, and that's going to show you where to align the next uh, course of the shingles as you go up. But I don't want to have any of these shift around while I'm working on them. So I'm going to just tack it in place with a short pin nail. 
Now I don't have to worry about the shingles shifting around as I'm applying each row. It's going to take me a little bit here, but once it's done, you'll see that it really transforms the look of this bird feeder. All right, now it does take a little bit of time to get all the shingles on the two end panels, but I'm sure you can see that the price is really worth the payoff there. So what I did after that is to take care of a few trim details, just like you would on any house. Added some side pieces here that just kind of covered up those plywood edges and finished off the sides. From there, I needed to add a couple of little stops on the inside of the grooves, and that's gonna hold the plexiglass panels. So there's an escape for the bird seed, but you don't want that bird seed going too far. So there's some side pieces that you'll add, and then some perches that get added, one on each side. Now the top of those sides and the perches are called out in the plans to get a round over routed on them. But this is also an opportunity to use some hand tools, and I find that an ordinary block plane will do just as good a job at rounding and chamfering. And since this is a project for the birds, they're used to standing on branches, not perfectly round, so the faceted shape, I think, works with the rustic look here. So once I get this other perch attached, looks like this one's ready for a roof. There are two details that I really like about this bird feeder. One is the decorative shingles that you see here. The other is the copper roof. Now the roof is going to consist of two lower roof panels that will go in like so, and then an upper roof assembly which consists of two panels that have a glued miter. All of these panels have a rounded edge on the bottom and decorative score marks. The copper that we're going to use to cover the roof is three mils thick, so it's pretty thin, it bends very easily, and it cuts wonderfully with a utility knife. The copper gets held to the roof panels with just some spray adhesive. So what I'm going to do is start by spraying both sides of my roof panel. I'll apply it, roll it over, and then I'll start folding the edges, which you'll see, and adding a few tacks for security's sake. Once all the roof sections are done, I'll be ready to apply them to the bird feeder. Well, our bird feeder is complete. What I've done is to add this mounting block to the top roof and all of these decorative trim boards to the edge of each of the roof panels. They're held on with a little bit of epoxy to seal the ends of the roof panels and some copper nails. And with that, there's just the ridge to apply and then we are ready for birds and bird seed. Woodsmithplans.com hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. 
woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.